I'm not interested in the politics. I ain't interested in the he says, she says. I'm here for one reason and one reason only. I'm going to spell it out for y'all. I'm here to teach y'all how to get groovy, like myself. Let's not waste any more time. First thing I want to address is there is one very important rule to getting groovy, and that is that there are no rules. However, there are some very foundational elements of the groove, if you will. Based off of the knowledge I've received from listening to a ton of 80s disco, funk, soul, whatever, I feel like the two main elements are seventh chords, just knowing how to use them, and then the pocket. And both of those I will now expand on a bit further. That's an F minor, right? Wrong. That is an F major chord. And all a major is, is just a triad. And then to make it a minor, you'd move this down to a G sharp. So now it's an F minor. And then like you can move it up to G minor. Move it back to an A, now it's a major. And you know, wherever the root note is, is the key of the chord. So the major chord here, you know, it's not super interesting. Um, not a lot of riz going on with this chord. You know, it's probably getting left on red. Throw this E in here, and now it's a F major seventh chord. Sounding a little bit more rich now, you know, like it knows its way around conversation with a female, but there's still room to improve. So check me out. Bring the bass note down to a D. Yeah. This is the dude that, you know, she telling you not to worry about. You get what I'm saying? Like, this is the work boyfriend. Take these away. That's you. That's the work boyfriend. A lot of that music sounds super complex, but at the end of the day, it's all just sort of dancing around the foundation of a seventh chord. So, for example, a very common chord progression. It's just bringing the second chord down five notes. So now you got this. Like I was saying, it sounds cool, but when we bring that lower bass note in, yeah, then we can go up here. But now this leads us into the next point I was talking about, which is the pocket. A lot of these songs, each individual sound kind of has its own pocket and frequency range it's taken up, if that makes sense. For example, our bass could be going like... So now if we take these bass notes away, kind of sounds stale, but we bring them back in. Changes how the chords sound. This is just a normal seventh chord. You can do different inversions of it, so we can like take the top notes down. Let's say this is an actual song. This would be like a keys layer, for example. And then this would obviously be the bass. It looks different now, but it's still playing the same exact notes, just different inversions. So the bass kind of has its own like pocket going on. And let's say there was another layer, like a guitar, right? And I'm just going to use the same notes, just in a different order again. So it has its own pocket going. And then for the second half, I'm actually take this note up an octave. Take it back down a little bit. Now it's too high. And I'm just doing this with FO keys to demonstrate what I'm talking about. But as you can see, the bass is like doing its own groove. Guitar is doing its own thing. It's in its own pocket. Keys doing its own thing. But they're all using the same notes. And it just kind of like fills out the entire frequency spectrum. For a bridge or something, you could bring the bass note up to the actual root of the chord. Then go back to the old one. So that was a very brief demonstration to put y'all onto the fundamentals of getting groovy. Why don't we get groovy for real now? If you didn't know, most of the drum machine sounds from that era come from a drum machine called the Lendrum. I'm using this plugin called VPROM. You definitely don't need it. You can just look up Lendrum one shots. I just like using this one because the hi hats are like, I don't know if you can tell. They're actually like randomized, so they sound real. That's really the only reason it's kind of a hassle to use this. Got all the sounds, you know. I'm gonna start off at a very smooth 110 BPM, I believe. Starting with the drums, I'm just gonna build a little loop out. I made the velocity of every second hi-hat a little bit lower, just so it has, you know, a little humanized groove to it. 
Yeah, let's get that kabasa going. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. It's very loud though, I'm gonna turn it down. I'm gonna pitch the snare down a little bit too. Just a little bit. Let's throw the classic clap in here. That's super loud as well. Perhaps some percussion. Maybe some toms at the end. I'm feeling pretty good about my drum loop. I'm gonna save you all the time of watching me do this and split up all the separate sounds. That was a journey, but I got them all separated. And I'm gonna route all these to a drum bus as well. First off, I feel like the snare could use a tiny bit of high end. And I'm gonna throw some super light OTT on it just to tighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna throw a vintage verb on here just so I can use gated snare preset. I either heard it somewhere or someone told me like the sounds from the Lindrum are already super compressed so you don't want to overdo it. I don't know if that's a reliable source though. Sounding pretty good to me. I'm going to throw the gated reverb on the toms as well. And I'm going to saturate them up with the J37. So it sounds all retro and stuff. All right, we got our drums. I'm gonna go ahead and split my channel. Get them on the timeline here. I think I'm gonna go in with some keys next. Um, I'm gonna be using the Yamaha DX27. I got it coming in right here. And I have a Tau Chorus on it just because it's a mono to kind of widen it out. If you ain't got a DX27 on you, I guess you just gotta charge that one to the game. But I'm gonna just mess around with some seventh chords and see what I can come up with. Try and record that in. Try and get it on the grid now. Throw some reverb on them. Gotta make sure we're on the 1980 setting because we're trying to get groovy. I'm gonna hop back on the DX27 here, give me a bass sound. So that would be the root note, right? So we're gonna play that note wrong. You already know we're taking it down. Yeah. I slowed it down to 106. I wasn't feeling 110 no more. Gonna try and get it as lined up as I can. I played that super off. Also, shout out to FL for adding the crossfade. Y'all kind of snapped on that. I'm gonna hop on this Casio keyboard now. If y'all watched my last video, I'm just using the same two keyboards. I'm gonna do a super quiet string layer just to kind of fill out the high end. I really outdid myself there. I can't lie, I'm not feeling the high note I did on the bass no more. So I'm just duplicating the first half of it. Yo, we starting to groove. I'm gonna add this little flute texture thing. I'm gonna put a ton of reverb on it before me. Yo. I don't got it in me to fix the timing right now. I will when the time comes for me to do that. All 
All right, I think it only needs one more layer, and I know exactly what it needs. It needs a, uh, you know what I'm saying, like one of them. Throwing outer space on here. Emulation of the rolling space echo. Let's see what quarter note sounds like. For the one time, we gotta do the slowed and reverb version just to see how it's feeling. Yo! I ain't arranged it yet, I gotta do- I'ma do some quick arrangement, get everything sounding good, and show y'all what we cooked up! Gotta do the bridge slash pre-hook section with the bass on the root note. Alright, so now it should sound pretty crazy when this part goes back into the hook. So let's feel it out. Let's see how it's feeling. Right, I hope I gave y'all some useful information on getting groovy. Um, knowledge is power. Remember that.